Within a month past, there has been a great stir, advertising, telegraphing, and hunting property from Missouri. The property that Illinois abolitionist Jira Platt was writing about in his diary in December 1853 was human property. Enslaved African Americans seeking freedom by crossing the Mississippi River and disappearing into free soil. Oh, what a spectacle. Eleven pieces of property walking in Indian file, armed and equipped facing the North Star. $3,000 offered for their apprehension after they were safe in Canada. The daring escape which Platt described had been set in motion a month earlier, on Saturday night, October 29, 1853. Eleven freedom seekers from Palmyra, Missouri, men, women, and children among them, had paddled across the moonlit Mississippi River to Quincy, Illinois. Not stopping, they walked an additional 12 miles, in Indian file, until they reached the town of Menden, Illinois, just before daybreak. The Platt Farm in Menden was a known underground railroad stop. Though authorities had never arrested Jira Platt himself, they had been harassing other abolitionists in the area for years. Platt kept a farm journal, a blue book, his family called it, that recorded not only his planting and harvesting, but also his occasional assistance to freedom seekers. On May 19, 1848, he wrote, Hannah Coger arrived on the UG Railroad. The track is kept bright, it being the third time occupied since the 1st of April. Platt even noted in his journal that Coger had belonged to Thomas Anderson of Palmyra. That same blue book didn't contain any more details about the 1853 Palmyra slave stampede, but years later, Platt's son Jeremiah recalled that he and some of his other brothers had helped transport the 11 runaways to Chicago, hidden inside two tightly covered wagons. Jeremiah Platt said that it took them a full four days before he and his brothers finally returned safely to Menden. Meanwhile, the Palmyra slaveholders had sent agents to Chicago, offering $3,000 in rewards. But anti-slavery newspapers in Chicago mocked them for doing so, and the Palmyra freedom seekers were never recaptured. Back in Missouri, the outrage was intense. Angry slaveholders organized a new, better-funded slave patrol called the Marion County Association. On Christmas Eve 1853, local politician Thomas Anderson, who had once lost his slave Hannah Coger to the Platts, spoke to a packed gathering of the new association. He roused the crowd with bitter words about their lost property, vowing revenge against Illinois abolitionists. It had been a very bad year for Missouri slaveholders. One Illinois newspaper had even taunted them about all the recurring slave stampedes. Slaves are running away from Missouri at the present time in battalions, marveled the Alton Telegraph. It was a spectacle for sure, one that 55-year-old Illinois farmer Jira Platt was more than happy to celebrate, and that 45-year-old politician and future congressman Thomas Anderson was simply unable to stop. Yeah.